Okay, welcome to part two. Um, this will make more sense. We'll, that, I kind of fumbled in the last five minutes of that of part one, but uh, I'm going to try to regroup and we'll get everything to get everything to start to make sense from what I was trying to explain in that last five minutes of uh, of part one. Um, at the beginning of this part two, right here, as you look at your schematic, this is definitely with fuse eight removed. So uh, things will start to make a little bit of sense here. Um, as you look at your schematic and you see fuse eight removed, you'll see that um, the PCM cannot get power on um, pins A3 and A2. That's the yellow and the uh, the purple. Uh, the crankshaft cannot get power. Um, the pin E7 can get power because that's a separate feed because we always have to watch our schematic. That is right here. That is the ignition switch. And that is getting power. The car is cranking right there. And you can see we're at cranking voltage on the gray. Um, the ignition coil relay um, is being grounded by that, uh, that driver in the PCM. I've got a lot called that the logic driver at pin E7 because um, it's definitely a proof of that. As you look at, uh, this is current flowing through the ignition coil um, relay. We don't have any current flowing through the, the PGI main relay because the fuse aid is removed. So let's measure that current and see if we get something this things make more sense. I'm going to look at the delta of the current flowing through the ignition coil relay. Okay. All right. The delta is about 81 milliamps. Okay. Now, if things work out, when I talk about the Ohm's law, the delta through the burgundy channel should be fairly close because whatever's flowing through the ignition coil relay is all flowing through that driver at the PCM with none coming from the PGI main relay. So let's take a look at that guy and see if she equals what we saw on the red channel. So there is a current, let me, me kind of check the delta. Okay, we're at 79, call it 80. Okay, we're pretty much even because when we get down to this range with these amp clamps, they, they're good, but you know, we're gonna have a little fudge factor with the measurements. So whatever current's flowing through here on red, it's the same current flowing through on burgundy. As you look at your schematic, you'll see that it'll make sense because it's the same series circuit um, coming from uh, the ignition coil relay into the PCM driver. That would latch the ignition coil relay and of course power the ignition coils as you can see on the schematic. Um, but um, obviously we have less current flowing through the, uh, the burgundy channel than we did when we had the system running normally when uh, both relays were closing. So anyway, I just wanted to show that and uh, so we know we have some, uh, you know, some, some validation or about the, uh, the current flowing. Um, so let me go to another, uh, another capture. So that was with fuse eight removed. And let me see another situation that we can talk about that uh, is interesting. Um, okay, this is called fuse two ignition removed. So we should have a, a situation that's different, but as far as the current, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens here. Let me get this one. Uh, um, up on a scope takes a second to load this is pico 7 which is a newer uh, software okay all right we uh we have things playing out differently here and it's all probably it makes a lot of sense when we break it down we have a crank signal you can see here uh, we have a crank signal because uh our pgi main relay is working properly um we have the pgi main relay closing and powering the PCM at, um, at, at yellow and purple. As we can see we're strong at yellow and purple um, because that relay uh, um, is latching. Um, our ignition feed is good. That's from the ignition switch on gray. You can see that on your schematic, that's a pin E9. We have current flowing through our PGI main relay coil. Uh, we don't have any flow flowing through the, the ignition relay coil because that uh, our fuse two is removed. So let's see about our our current validation, um, let's take a look at our blue delta, our blue guy, and 
we'll go from here just to see how much current is flowing through the relay. And then uh, the current flowing through burgundy should be the same. Okay. All right, we got, a, we got about 70, what is that? 75, 75 milliamps through the blue. So how much is flowing through the burgundy? It should be about 75, it's gonna be close. It may not be dead nuts equal, but it will be close. If I look at the delta now, because I got a thick line here because it was a hashy signal. Our burgundy is 67 and change. I could probably give it some, uh, a little bit of body English to get it up, you know, to, to make myself look better, but no, I'm not really. We're about 74 and change. So you can see the way, see the way Ohm's law plays out, you know, when uh, um, we lose one of the loads that uh, it basically is a series circuit when we're testing with two clamps. It's going to be the same in each test point. So um, anyway, that's, uh, as we can see in red, we do not have current flowing. We're pretty much nil there um, because uh, in this case, we've, we have to, we're cranking it with a fuse to remove. This car is cranked no start here because there is no spark. We have injection pulse and uh, that stuff. But uh, anyway, I will go to another uh, another capture and talk about it. Are we on time? Date modified. How's our camera looking? <clears throat> Don't want to be cockeyed. go to this capture and this is with all the fuel injectors disconnected and um, this one may be interesting um, it's only the fuel injectors disconnected so everything else is intact we obviously would have a no start um, we got five captures here let's go back and uh, okay a little gap here but basically Basically, this is cranking. This is just the screen. We'll just kind of take one, one, uh, one channel at a time. Look at your schematic. I'll start with the blue. That's the first one. And just kind of, I'll measure it. Uh, and we're going to see um, about 63. Uh, I don't have a bottom because uh, the time base. Uh, but nonetheless, this is about 64. So we're gonna call that good. That relay is flowing current, and we're gonna call that good. So that's 64. Uh, I'll take the next one is red. That is another, uh, that is the ignition coil, relay coil, and that's flowing current. So what would that be? Okay. All right, about 42, as I said, I'm not a, I would say that's good, that's flowing current. Um, I don't have, a, I didn't zero the, the amp that good, that was my fault, but nonetheless, we can infer that that's, uh, that's good. Um, the burgundy would be the sum total of those. So let's, let's look at that and see what that is and see if we're, we're fairly close. We, we should, we're gonna be fairly close. I said it won't be hair splitter on, but the burgundy current, which is current, uh, at the PCM at E7, so uh, uh, we're about 176. So if we added uh, 64 and 43, we wouldn't be exactly 17 because I said there's a, there's a there's a, a zeroing factor which uh, I didn't um, I didn't base it on. If I go to the bottom here, so you can you get into 150. And uh, but anyway, I know that that's pretty much the current flowing through uh, both those. Um, those, those relays, the PGI main and the ignition coil relay. Um, um, purple is our feed. Okay, purple and yellow, we're strong. We can say that. We're, we're cranking, but we got injectors disconnected. They, those guys are both probably cranking voltage, maybe 9 or 10 volts. Let me go to the yellow one. And we got 10.38, that's cranking. Let me go to the purple one. That should be the same. All right, that's purple. We are uh, at, oh, no, wrong one. <laughs> Grab the wrong, that's easy to do. All right, let's go, okay. Okay, purple about 1084, that is cranking voltage. 
Okay, what's next? Uh, we know the gray is good. Um, the crank sensor is good. And let's talk about the crank sensor because something interesting as you look at it. Um, you see the big gaps um, between there? That really isn't the encoded part of the crank sensor. And it's really important we talk about this. That's time. That's the crank slowing down to deal with a compression event. So just something to be mindful of. That that's um, that's the, that's his time. You'll see that a lot on scopes where you see the, you see a wideness and take a look at the variable there. That uh, that is the crank slowing down, um, and that that's that happens a lot when you scope. So you can see this is a cranking event. You see a wide, a wide, a wide, a wide, a wide. Um, that wide that would probably be you know um, emblematic of a compression event. So I'm going to say this would be about. One, two, three, four. This would be 720 crank degrees um, because uh, we, we get wide there. It's, that, it's that kind of like a mini relative compression event where, uh, where um, the crank just slows down to deal with the compression and it speeds up, then it slows down and hence so. Just wanted to point that out. Um, so I guess we're done with this one. How are we on time? Uh, let's go to the next one. And... Uh, Okay, I'm gonna go to uh, this one, and I'm gonna call this. Uh, let me see it pop up. I'll read it. Okay, we're gonna call this one. Um, fuse eight is intermittent. Now, if we had a loose fuse that wasn't wasn't just removed or blown, where it wasn't making perfect contact all the time, this is starting to what we'd see. So. I decided to pick an opportunity to, to, to create this scenario. Um, here we can see our we see two glitches on this capture. Um, the time for the glitch, and let's see, is how long is this glitch on for? Oh, okay, just getting used to the Pico Seven. Okay, that's not very long. That's not very long. It glitched for a. Uh, um, about 300 milliseconds, okay? So that's, that's right here. So anyway, we'll talk about everything kind of before and after the glitch. Um, we're gonna call it, okay, the reason this glitched is we're glitching because of fuse eight. Fuse eight would be, a, in this scenario, a loose fuse or have some corrosion on the blades that it's real tough to diagnose and may, may have had parts thrown at it, but nonetheless. So look at your schematic, look at fuse eight. And if that, it, for 300 milliseconds, if that, fuse did not make contact in the fuse box, let's look what would happen. Let's start with the blue, and we obviously stop, would stop flowing current through that coil. You can see us, I'm not gonna measure it, but you, you can see right there, we have an abrupt loss of current, and we, we don't have current flowing down here. And when that doesn't happen, um, we wouldn't have a latch at, um, at the PCM at A3 and A2, which are um, purple and yellow, obviously, that you can see that. You see the yellow down, and you can see the purple down. Okay, that makes sense. Those two guys, that's not, the PCM lost its feed for that, that moment in time. Um, the crank sensor obviously went away because it needs power to work. It had that descend. Usually means a power supply problem to the crank. Take a look at that. See that little roller coaster there? If that wasn't there and it was straight down, Think of more the crank per se, something in the crank um, or the signal wire, not so much a power feed. I've noticed that. Just something to bear in mind is that little roller coaster down, right? Uh, you know, and as I said, if it wasn't there, you'd think of more of the, the crank sensor itself. But anyway, our green signal is, is still low. The reason it's low because the driver's still latched closed in the PCM at terminal E7, and we have current flowing um, through the um, ignition coil uh, relay. And let's kind of look at that. I'm going to try to stretch that. Let me see if I can remember how to do that on the Pico um, 7 software. Let me see if I can go to display. Um, vertical. Come on. Let me see if. We... Okay. All right. <laughs> a little bit. I stretched it a little bit. Okay. 
basically I want to get the delta in that. So that's the current flowing through the ignition coil relay. Um, let me measure that. Uh, so I want to measure the burgundy and kind of see what's up with that. So that's our current. That's about... up there let me figure this thing out if okay okay all right all right let me see something here all right okay now it's making sense to me I'll see what's happening here okay Okay. There's our glitch right here. Um, when Fuse 8 glitched, all right, um, current stopped flowing through the, uh, the the PGI main one relay coil, but it continued to flow through the uh, the red channel. But this is actually it flowed a little more when the current stopped flowing from the PGI main relay. Um, may have something to do with voltage drop. There's less voltage drop because there's less overall current. So you have a little increase in current. The delta between here and here is not the total current. Um, I don't have a, a key off um, or a startup point to turn up because I, didn't, I didn't, didn't zero the clamp, which I probably should have, but nonetheless. So I can't measure from here to here. That's just the difference. Current was flowing here. Um, and then the, the Fuse 8 relay glitched, and then uh, it stopped flowing here, so a little more flowed here. So basically what's flowing here and what's flowing here is the same. So I'm going I'm to look at a... Okay. That's 119. And... Uh, Uh, that's 80 that's about 80 milliamps so um, we can say that currents flowing here that it flowed right here it flowed 80 80 less milliamps so basically the current flowing here and the current flowing here are the same thing I know it's a little tricky but uh you get the idea because it's a basically a, a, a parallel circuit where one circuit is not flowing current the ignition uh, PGI main relay coil, and the only current is flowing through the uh, ignition coil relay. So you can see that right there. But um, anyway, they, they should be the same, and they are. Uh, but it's just hard to get you a good measurement. But I think you kind of get the drift when we see no current flowing through blue, and that all the current's flowing through red and, and burgundy, which is the same circuit. So anyway, um, we can... Uh, see that 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 comparison there anyway i will end part two and i'll try to finish this with uh with one more part thanks a lot for watching this is uh this is mark with technical technician from diagnation thank you very much